right. front starters to bench responding right. tonight. Well, I thought we did a good job of, um, you know, taking care of the basketball. We had a couple turnovers there that were on force, but we kind of kept it at our at our range that we need to keep it at. And then I thought our we made that run to start the second half, and we were able to, you know, really rebound the basketball and not allow second chance opportunities. And you know, started the game five to one on the first media timeout. And they had five offensive rebounds, and the end it was seven. So we did a much better job after that first media timeout. Um, but I thought our guys executed and played well. Obviously, Cam gave us a, uh, a big lift off the bench, made every shot that he took, and um, just trying to establish Zach and then kind of just read how they're handling Braden and ball screen things and then uh, just kind of sprinkle in from there. We had a couple shots in the first half um, that we'd like to have back. But I, I thought our guys played well. You know, obviously this is one of the best defensive teams in the country, and uh, uh, to put 96 points up against them is is something that we haven't done. We we might have done it a long time ago against them, but since he's gotten that program established, we haven't been able to to really open up and score against them, and they've made um, it really difficult on us. And um, so this was a big night for us. This is a big win for us. Hey Matt, over here. I thought your ball movement tonight was a lot better than what it ever was at Ohio State. Did you work a little bit on that this weekend? Or I, th I seen you mouthing sure. them before the start, of the, the start of the game. It looked like you were saying, move the ball, move the ball, yeah. move the ball. Yeah, we worked on it. Like, sometimes the ball will stick. But, um, you know, you also have to understand we had six turnovers out of our 14, and we got the ball down low against Ohio State. So, like, we're going to still try to get the ball in positions to, you know, to Zach or to Braden or whoever it might be on our team, right? And we just kind of play off of that. But yeah, we really talked about ball movement, making it simple. When they take things away, trying to, to beat Rutgers one-on-one -on -one is not going to work. You know, you, you have to move the ball. You have to play out of ball screen. You have to play out of the post. And then when you have advantageous scenarios that you get in transition or you get on offensive rebounds, whatever, you know, now you've got to take advantage of that and you've got to get layups and dunks. And I thought we did a good job of that. Matt, how hard is it for a guy like Cam to stay patient where you know he's capable of doing what he did, but you know when you're getting four minutes, six minutes, even ten right. minutes and being asked to basically right. go in and play a different role, stay patient and, and just know that your time is going to come? Yeah, it's borderline impossible, to be frank. Like you sit there and you wait and you know you're getting in the first half. You might not get in the second half. Um, you know, we've talked about it a lot as a staff, just – you know, you get into a 10-man rotation, and when you sub, is it more for a defense, offense? But he's been solid on both ends, and it's hard because it's a numbers game, and that's all it is. It's not like we don't believe in him because we do. Um, but tonight, like, he was able to show his skill, show his athleticism, but also he didn't do anything that he couldn't do. You know, he stayed within himself. You know, he had a couple direct drives that were great, obviously knocking down his threes. Um, but, no, he's, he's kept a great attitude. You, you kind of see – you know, his upside there. You, you know, you see, you know, especially playing al alongside Braden and then playing alongside a, a great post like Zachary. It's just preempted my question, but, you know, it would have been human nature to throw up a heat check or two, but it seemed like he made good decisions attacking yes. the basket too. How hard is that, especially when you're uh, a younger guy having a night like this? Yeah, it's, it's just who he is. Like, you know, he's a 3 and D guy. You know, he, he's a guy that can defend. Um, he can space. He takes the shots that come his way. Um, when they don't come his way, if they play him on a closeout, he can direct drive. But really, it's you know getting the ball inside at that point, you know, and, and, and learning to if they're going to take you away. So I, you know, a lot of people in our league is you know taking Fletcher Lawyer away, and I thought tonight he was great. You know, he had five assists, one turnover, and you know he has scored 27 against Tennessee, and he scored 27 against Arizona. Like what? What do you think they're going to do? You know, and and so like. You know, in those games, he's opportunistic in those games. We'll run a couple of things for him, but it's not like what we do for Braden or it's not like what we do for Zachary. And so, like, I think it's important. Um, a lot of young guys don't know who they are yet. You know, they, they think who they are is how they played in high school. And, and there's a small percentage of people that, that can do that and transition in there. He's done a really good job of just playing to his strengths, taking what's given and not forcing things. And even tonight, like, you know, you know, just like you mentioned, he's seven for seven. And like, he didn't force anything. He just let the game come to him. He, he's he's going to be a good player. He's already a good player. He just, you know, needs more of an opportunity. Hey, Matt, um, talk about the state of the game. You've got two generational players, Zach Eady, Caitlin Clark. As a fan, what's it like 
for all these fans that are that are out there watching all these games and knowing there's two generational talents right now? Yeah, a lot of times with someone like Caitlin Clark or Zach Eady, like you don't appreciate them until they're gone. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, um, you know, she's so dynamic in the way she can move east west at 30 feet and flick it and make it like it's 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 borderline amazing and um people don't understand like how hard that is it's like a video game it's like what steph does like it's like a video game it's amazing clay thompson those guys like you know, if you really appreciate greatness um but i'm a big believer in this you know zach obviously um has the most rebounds now and he passes joe barry carroll who's one of our great players but you don't replicate greatness like the next Rick Mount's not coming through the doors. There's only one Rick Mount. There's only one Joe Barry Carroll. There's only one Caitlin Clark. There's only one. And um, just appreciate them. You know, appreciate their greatness and appreciate they're their here. And as a coach, you always want, you know, dealing with Zach, you always want more. You know, you, you, don't, you don't want more from somebody who played six minutes as your ninth man. It's not fair. They didn't get the opportunity. But when you're dealing with someone who's special like that, like you got to keep pushing them. You know, you got to keep, you know, grinding. Um, because they have the capability to carry everybody on a given night. Uh, Matt, you mentioned you said a lot of young guys don't know who they are yet. You've got two sophomore guards. How far have they come in terms of right. learning who they are? I, I think, you know, for Braden, it's he gets some backhanded compliments because people will hedge ball screens, they'll trap ball screens, they'll extend the ball screens, and sometimes he wants direct plays instead of getting the ball out of his hands and getting – for lack of a better term, a hockey assist, and the ball's got to move sometimes. So that's where his development is. He wants everything to go smooth, and everybody's trying to knock him out of rhythm, so it's a little bit harder. Fletcher's really shown a lot of resolve. He hasn't shot the ball well here for about five or six games, but he also hasn't had a lot of attempts. But it's not who you are as a player. Who you are as a player is the total package, the value. How do you defend? Do you take care of the basketball? Do you have a good attitude? Fletch has been great and Braden's been great in those situations because this was really, this time of last year was really tough for us. It was really tough for those two guys. And they're doing a much better job. And a lot of times people will look at it and like, well, how are they doing a much better job? It's when adversity sets in. You know, when adversity sets in, that's where you see the difference. And Fletch has kept a great attitude through a little bit of a shooting slump, but he's doing good things to help us. And, and Braden's been fantastic. Both those guys have been, they won it all. And, and sometimes you just you, you can't get it all all the time. You gotta slowly but surely build on that. But you know, fortunate to have him in our program. Matt, I've been uh, watching Purdue games for 67 years now, and uh, I don't remember free throw shooting like it's gone in the last two games. Yeah, 27 in a row, and then 38 out of 39 till Will Berg missed the last one. Yeah, have you done anything special? To because no. they were struggling before the Ohio no. State game. You know, the only thing I say to guys, you know, um, during the game is do your routine. Like, don't do anything different. Don't think any different. Um, you don't think hit or miss. You think your mechanics. You think your little routine that you have. If you go up thinking hit or miss, it's going to be the latter, you know. And some guys you just leave alone. But that's the only thing I say to them. Just do your routine. But, no, it's great to see. Like, Zachary struggled for about three games in a row. And now the last two games he hasn't missed. So, you know, it, it balances out. I, I was hoping we had some makes coming our way. But we ruined a 20 for 20 game, right? If you go 20 for 20, you got to win the game. But so, but maybe it's a silver lining. I don't know. Early on, um, they, they got some offensive rebounds and then some turnovers, and, and it was a 21-20 game. Yep. Um, did you tell them anything, or, or what did you see adjustment-wise um, yeah. to change the game there? Uh, it wasn't adjustment. Just take care of the basketball. You know, the first five minutes, we have four turnovers. We give up, I think, five offensive rebounds. Like, we just – we weren't playing well. Like, we just take what the defense gives you. You know, be, be simple. Um, you know, we were getting stops, but then if you don't get the rebound, you're not rewarding yourself. Uh, but more than anything, trying to keep them in front of us. They're very good. They work downhill. They drive the ball. And then we, we had a couple undisciplined plays when they got deep. We needed to chest them and then not let them get away from us. Fernandez got away from us, hit a couple threes um, in that stretch. And uh, that's all we really talked about. It wasn't any of their action or anything that they were doing. It's just kind of at the end of their sets, they were taking us off the dribble, and then we weren't doing a good job boxing out. This didn't really impact the game at all, but I feel like I'm seeing more innocuous texts on celebrations after threes. Yeah. 
Has that been an emphasis lately from what you can tell? Those are the officials? only ones we've had right there, like two, and looks well, like they just kind of matched them up. The Illinois-Michigan State game a while back was the same way. They called one on Illinois, and then they, they, they matched it up. Yeah, immediately yeah. called another one on it. Yeah, so I don't know. So you haven't heard anything about that being an emphasis? That's the pool reporter, right? you gotta, you got to go down the hall for that one. <laughs> I, I don't know. I asked him what he said. He didn't know what he said. So, but just, I, but the thing for us is that no matter what they say to you, like who cares, right? They gave a technical and I told him, I said, they're going to give us a technical if we do anything. And we obviously, but I didn't see it. So I don't know. I'm not going to argue with someone who went seven for seven and four for four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ex expanding a little bit on what you said earlier about Zach and generational type players like Rick Mountain, Joe Barry, Carroll, you played with one of those guys in Glenn Robinson. Mm -hmm. What has made Zach so special both on and off the court that you've seen? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, when you talk about his playing ability, you know, his elite size, then I think his competitiveness with that. You know, I, he, he can go out of his area to rebound, which when you have that much cargo, it's, it's kind of a tough challenge for a lot of guys that size. Um, and then his skill level has improved so much. He became a good free throw shooter. He became a good passer. He was a bad free throw shooter. He was a bad passer. He just his understanding of the game. So he got the ball stripped the other night at Ohio State. So when he came in to watch film and I talked to him about it, he's, he's very intelligent and understanding of like who he is. So I just said, hey, you can't drop the basketball. He goes, yeah, but when I chin it and I turn, I crack people in the head. So his transformation either has to be lower or higher. So he's got to kind of arc the basketball some. And you saw him do that a couple times tonight in those situations. So just a smart guy, understand him. And, but like he doesn't have, I always say this, and I don't think you guys totally grasp it because you don't live it. But there's so much crap that goes on with recruiting. And you feel bad for young kids because they get put on this pedestal and then they go and play college basketball and people see him and they're like, well, he's not all that. Well, he's young. You know, he's 18, 19 years old playing against 22 year old. He doesn't have any of that. So like when he was 15 years old, he didn't play organized basketball. So like that's such a big piece to where when you tell him something, it's not a fight. He kind of takes it in. Now he might argue with you a little bit, but he's, he's pretty smart and under, like when, like when he said that right there, like, hey man, don't drop the ball. He says, well, I can, you know, transfer the basketball and I can do it what you're saying, but I'm gonna elbow this guy in the head because it's 6'9 and you're 7'4", you know, and so like things of that nature, he, he has a good feel for what he has to do, whatever. But the, the other stuff like off the court, like he's just a selfless person. He's a good guy. Like he's, he, he's never been one of those guys that didn't score, which this doesn't happen a lot, but like he's mad when we win and he scores 14, right? Like he's never that guy. Like, and, and, like when you deal with people that are skilled, like they want to win, but they, they want to score too. They want to score. Like you'll see the bitter beer face sometimes. You'll see those guys. You'll be like, come on, man, we won by 30. I know you only shot four times, but like, but like they work so hard. Like they're maniacal workers. So when you put in that kind of time, like you just, you know, you want to crack at it from a shooting standpoint. And not every time it's going to be where you're going to get the volume of shots that you want. Sam Russell. Matt, I asked earlier about the, just how hard it is for Cam to sit there and not play and, and kind of wait for an opportunity. Miles is kind of in the same boat, and I feel like every year in an NCAA tournament, we see a guy like this come off a bench and have a big game that nobody saw coming. Yep. Just how big of a luxury is it to have you know, a, a freshman who's not gun shy that comes in and you know, right. as soon as he touches the ball, he, he, if he got a shot, yeah. he's going to shoot it. No question. And, and even if they take it away, like having a game like that, um, you know, Mason making nine threes last year against Penn State, like you, it's the first thing that should be on Mason Gillis's you know, scouting report. This is the first thing on cams. So the more space we can give Zachary, the better. So Braden gives him space, Fletch gives him space, Cam gives him space. Like all the guys that can really, really shoot, Lance Jones gives him space. So like all the guys that can really shoot, you know, that's all it's gonna do for him. So like now if they wanna overdo things with him, now, you know, Cam has the ability to make that shot, make that drive and a close out and just make a good basketball play. Just, it just completes our team and gives us balance. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I didn't know Keystone Light was your thing.